Hi there, I'm Ben and welcome to my full collectible guide for Kena Bridge of Spirits. Uh, we're going to be doing Rusu Mountain first. This is the first one, the first area that you can fully complete when you get to it. Now the idea of these videos is to do it once you've finished the story. That's going to be the simplest way or use it as clean up. There are timestamps so you can do that. I'll be collecting everything that pertains to trophies, so rot, hats, flower shrines, shrine mail, Curse chest and meditation points. So everything will be in here. Again, there will be time, there are timestamps. So you can just skip to anything that you might be missing. Quite a few of them are quite obvious. Now I said the best thing to do with these is these videos is to do them after the story. I'm doing them after the story. After I've finished the area and I know you're able to complete it. But with this video, you can use this for the first time you go through this area. Everything in this area you can get the first time you come here so there will be fights like this section there is a fight before you can go and uh, collect the the rot over here so you won't be seeing any of the fights or anything like that i'm going to be doing an entire run like i do with most of my collectible guides i'm going to be doing an entire run of the area uh, ignore my rot count three you can see i've got four out of 13 um three of them are story related i will come to those later on so don't worry you will get them uh, don't just ignore the counter for now. I will be showing the map after every single collectible for anybody who's using timestamps so you don't get lost. Because like I said, I am doing the entire run. So uh, bear with me. I just think it's easier when doing a collectible guide like this to show everything. I could jump around the map, but um, it's frustrated me in the past when I've seen that and I don't know where I am. So we're doing it an entire, an entire run. Uh, so yeah, it's quite simple. They're very straightforward. It does look like, it does feel like an open world, but a lot of this is actually quite linear and straightforward. So we're running up here. I think there's another fight up here. Uh, and then this this kind of water ball thing will appear. It's called a tear, I think, actually. A tear, the forest tear will appear. That all rhymes, lovely. Uh, and you can use that to get rid of this stuff. So turn the rot into the tear. And then... Um, Use R1 or R2. R1 takes less. So they have that bar above their head. Uh, and that's kind of how long it's going to last. Every time we use an ability, it goes down. I think spin uses less than slam. And then use this. Uh, use it on this over here. And this is the flower shrine. You can see I got the trophy. That was the first one I got uh, in this playthrough. Uh, you don't actually need to interact with them for it to count. You just need to expose them. <laughs> Uh, but if you do interact with them, you're going to get some of those uh, blue crystals. Uh, next is another rot, so you will continue up here. There's lots of slopes you can slide down, so uh, be wary. Don't worry, you won't die. It just um, means it'll take longer. So we're going to have to come up here twice, unfortunately, because we have to go up to go down to go up again. <laughs> go up to get the rot, and then uh, go up to continue on. So over there, that platform on the left, that's kind of where we're aiming for, over there. That's where the rot is. So because the, the jumping and the... You're not really supposed to stand on any of the, the rocks at the side. It can be a bit funny whether you uh, get stuck on the environment and things like that. But if you drop down and then slide and then jump across, you can get over here and uh, use the pulse to expose this rot. There we go, number two. So none of the collectibles are missable in the game, so don't worry about that. There are missable combat trophies, so be aware all of the combat ones are missable. If you didn't know, so be aware of that. Uh, one thing I will just mention, if you're here looking for the final meditation, I'm going to mention this in every video actually, if you're here looking for the final meditation spot because you found everything else post-story and you don't know where the final one is, finish the game again. <laughs> The, the final meditation spot you sit at at the end of the game, that's not a spoiler. Um, it counts as one of the meditation spots you need for the trophy. So if you're here looking for that, then uh, that's where it is. You just need to finish the game again. Because when you do finish the game, it, it sort of brings you back to the last sort of save point. Uh, it doesn't. There is no post-game running around it actually you need to fight the uh, or sit down at the last meditation point to finish the game and it does count so running up here you're going to see the the uh, fast travel point there i'm going to press circle when i'm not actually near the ledge we need to drop down to this ledge so this is probably the most hidden one in this area because you don't need to come down here and it's not immediately obvious if you don't look over that edge 
and that's rot number three. So some of the rots will actually give you hats as well. Uh, I think it happens three times in this one. So that's where we are, near the ruins, uh, fast travel point there. Next is a spirit mail. It's quite a ways away, it's, it's a lot of climbing before we get there. Uh, but with the spirit mail, I'm going to show you on the map where the spirit mail actually pertains to as well. So you pick the spirit mails up, which uh, you need for the trophy, uh, and you'll actually use them in the village to open up different areas in the village and open that place up entirely. So the village you can't do until you've done the, the game. That's going to be the last one you do. So you need to go across this path, you need to do all of this as part of continuing on anyway. I give 10 points if you can figure out which platform I'm playing on, which version this is. Is it the PS5 version or is it the PS4 version? <laughs> yeah, comment, let me know if you can figure out which one it is. Because I, I can tell a very slight difference, but to somebody who doesn't know uh, which version it is, I'd be interested to know if you can tell. Uh, right, so jump across here, and then you have to continue left, but there's the very obvious right path as well. So if you go to the right, you're going to get the spirit mail. Here it is, they all look like this, it's just kind of a... looks like a floating bag of rotten meat. <laughs> I don't know what that's supposed to be. Uh, yeah, so once you pick it up, I'll show you the map. So this is where we are, this is where we picked it up from. And then this over here, you see this marker down here. That is the delivery for that specific spirit mail. There are separate ones for each one. So you can't just use a spirit mail on any of the letter boxes in the, uh, in the village. They all have a specific one. It will get marked on your map, but uh, it'll all come round full circle when I do the village um, video. I'll have to explain where every spirit mail came from, so it'll all make sense then. So now we are continuing on. This is where we would uh, usually go now. Lots of Nathan Drake style climbing. Surprised they didn't even go with the full yellow. Yeah. Uh, big jump. <laughs> I need a run up for this one. It should be alright with the double jump anyway. But once you're at the top, did I just say once? Once you're at the top, turn to the right, left even. <laughs> it was my right at that point, the left. Um, and look for this block, and then you're going to use the rot. So if you use square, and then L2 square to move this over. You don't actually need to drop it for to get on it. They will hold your weight, but you don't want to give them that extra stress, do you? And then you're going to get rot number four, which is going to be under here. Leveled up. So you will level up more than likely once you get 15. This will be your... I think this is the 15th one. It's the Yeah, this is the... If you're doing it in order. Uh, if you'll level up... No, it's not. It's nowhere near because I've missed all the village ones on purpose. Um, you'll level up. You just get an extra usage from the rot during combat, which is especially helpful in the hardest difficulty, which is absolutely insane in this game compared to the rest of it. It is... Uh, it's really good. Uh, so ignore the rope, so you're going to get to that bridge, ignore the rope, that's the, the way you need to go. You're going to come across here and you're going to get to the first cursed chest, the one and only cursed chest in this area, uh, which will also give you a hat once you've done it. So what, with the cursed chests, chests, there's a specific way you need to defeat the enemy. So this one you need to defeat them all without getting hit. You can see your health is non-existent, you're on the final red bar of health. So if you get hit you do actually die, um, so don't die. It's not a problem if you do, you can try, try the chest as many times as you like. You just get rewound a bit and have to come back. But once you've killed them all, that's the cursed chest obviously done. That's ticked off and counted now. And then if you open it up, you're going to get the first hat of this area, which is Bird's Nest. Oh, 
and that's where we are. Now you don't need to purchase the uh, hats for them to count, you just need to find them for the trophy. Of course you're going to be purchasing them all, you want all the rocks with different hats, why wouldn't you? Now we're going to use this and go across. So if you're here the first time, this area will be completely shut off to you. I will be going the, the normal path now. This will all be red. There will be lots of sort of... Uh, there's no enemies, but there's all the it's all closed off. And you'll need to come this way. So this way, I could skip this for the sake of the video, but for the sake of showing you the exact path, I'm not going to. So you'll need to move that stone up to that point. Come to this point here and just do a pulse to open this door up if you didn't know. And then we're going to run through this cave. There's nothing actually in here, but uh, to link everything together, I'm just going to quickly run through. It's quite dark in here. If you keep pulsing, you'll uh, light these crystals up light your way and once you get to the end here watch out for the plank you have to go in on the plank otherwise you'll fall down uh, there's gonna be a little mini boss fight here and once that's all finished there's stuff like the stuff I'm not actually going to show in this video is the uh, the blue crystals and things like that the vases and things like that I'm not showing any of that because we don't need that for trophies but to the right hand side if you climb up there there's some of those uh, I'll try and remember where they all are and mention them once when, when, when I said once again once we go past them but we're gonna take this lift up that will drop down and that's gonna take us up to Rusu himself bit of a weird visual thing happening there not quite sure what happened so there on the left hand side if you pick that uh, that cat up you'll get some experience points for leveling And at the top here, when you get to the top of the stairs, you'll get a cutscene, you'll meet Rusu, and you'll get the bow, which means you can now fully get everything in this area. There was one right at the very beginning that we didn't get because we need the bow, but we can now get it. Uh, there is the fast travel point, make sure you light that up. This bit now is a training ground. Now we need to do all of the training exercises to get a hat or a mask more specifically. It's counted as a hat though. But we're just going to run around and get everything else first. So if you come to the left and shoot this, then you're going to drop a rot down. So the purple vases in trees that you see will be rots. The blue ones are just kind of the crystals. The purple fruit there that you see, shoot those down. Let the rot eat them as well. That's where we are on the map now. If you run over to here, you're going to see the hat store. If you just go towards it to register it, you're going to get the Whirlybird hat. There's also a chest there behind it. I'm not going to open it, but that's extra experience and stuff like that. Crystals, I think, that might be in that one. Now I'm going to unlock a flower shrine, which is back up towards the start. It's there, you can see it all covered. There it is, all covered in uh, nastiness. And the water that you need is up here in this tree. It can be a bit weird to control this with the, uh, the stick, especially when it's close to Kana herself. Kind of, um, the camera has a bit of a, a moment so try and keep this thing as far away from you as possible. But again, once you just kind of ex expose it like that, that's counted now. Of course, interact with it if you want the crystals. So that's two down. Uh, now we're going to do all the training exercises quickly. So you have to do all four of these. So it is going to take a while to get through these. Uh, well, they're quite quick, but obviously it's not going to take just a minute. We have to do all of them. So for this one, speak to him and then you're going to set off. You need to run and shoot at the same time. So there's going to be six targets. Nearly missed that one. Three. You've got plenty of time to do this. It's not difficult. Even though I can make it look difficult. <laughs> Four. And then the final one. So if you can just follow the uh, the sparkles there as well. It literally leads you to the next one. 
So you're going to get the experience points and the crystals uh, anyway. So that's number one done. And then we're going to run over here. Do number two. This is an easy one. This is probably the first one you should do. It's that easy. So you're going to use the rot on the lever here. It's going to drop these uh, four targets down. One, two, three, four. And that's that one done. Nice and simple. Now arrow management is going to be the the trickier part of the final one. The final one's obviously like the, the, the final test. So again, we'll just quickly talk to him here. Probably not necessarily not necessary to talk to him. But shoot this one here. It doesn't work if you shoot the one. You have to shoot the painted one. So shoot that one. One, two, three. And that's that done. Now we'll go and do the final one. Which is over here by the hat cart. Uh, this one is made up of three stages. So you need to do this one three times. to get progressively more difficult. Nope, don't jump talk. <laughs> Used to play in Dark Souls too much where X is talk. Even though it's X to talk now, or progress through the uh, conversation. So use the rot again. One, two. So you can see, you can only use, obviously, you, your arrows need to charge up. There, that was an easy one. That's just four. So I'm just going to let my arrows charge up again before starting. Four. Now you need to be semi quick. You, the the most important thing is to be accurate rather than quick, because you don't your your arrow usage is going to be the problem. Like I'm having to wait here for the arrows to come back. There. So being accurate is more important than uh, being quick. I'm just letting them charge up again. And we'll do this one. This is the final one. This one you're definitely going to run out of arrows and have to wait around a bit. I missed one over here. I didn't see that before. Do I miss another one? I think I missed another one from the left. There, does another one just appear there? Yeah, it did. Where did that come from? Oh, here we go. I missed... Yeah, there we go. So I'm waiting for the arrows. This is the worst part. It feels like you're going to run out. And I missed it there completely. <laughs> so when I said make sure you don't miss, uh, yeah, I didn't even follow my own advice there. A bit too uh, quick on the trigger. But once you've done that and you've done all four, you do need to do all of those training missions. You will get Rusu's mask, which is actually a hat. And then you can leave this area. So this is the path again. I'm going to be taking the full path towards the end of the... Uh, the area or back down we're going back down the mountain now so there's gonna be a fight here you're gonna have uh, monkeys in the trees here and everything like that once you the fight is finished shoot that up there to bring this drawbridge down and then you would go to the left there's another uh, fast travel point over there you would go down to the left but don't to continue don't do that jump across here and use the flowers or the flower to come across to the meditation spot number one so the problem with meditation spots is they're not actually marked on or counted on the uh, the area counter they're completely sort of separate so sit at it make sure the health goes up and then you're good you're able to leave at that point that's counted now and I completely forgot to show that on the map. I do apologize, but you can kind of get a feel for where that is. It's next to this fast travel point. So once you're done, slide down. There is a flower up there. You can just see it. So if you jump, the time will slow down and you can shoot that flower. Uh, I think it's just experience or crystals. It's nothing that we need. It's not rot or anything like that, so don't worry. And once you slide down here, the first time you come down here, there's going to be a boss fight. So everything will be chaotic at this point so i'm just going to jump in here with the uh, the initial playthrough here uh, so this scene will play out you'll get taro's knife and then this these are the three uh, story specific rots you can see them popping out there so this is as i'm finishing the boss fight this but this will happen and you'll get those three rot and then we'll go back and carry on so now the counters should be even you should this should be your ninth one for the area now so if you come into uh, Rusu's house, open this drawer up, 
you'll get one. There's a few other bits in here in the house, some of the uh, experience and stuff like that. So there we are, Rusu's house to where we are. Yeah, there's fruit in the bowl and things like that. So this is the area we were at before. It will have all been covered in. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to call it. The red stuff. The the scourge. Let's call it the scourge. I don't actually know what it's called. So shoot that target. Spin the uh, the thing around to get the water. The tear to pop out and then plant it. And then you're going to run around all here. The one you actually need is there. That gourd or squash. And then uh, do a pulse next to it, and a little uh, rot's going to come out. And he's actually going to bring a hat with him as well. He's going to have the squash hat, which you will see there. Automatically get. And for the people using timestamps, that's where we are. Rusu's house, very obvious. So we are nearly done here, really. We're just kind of working our way back down the mountain uh, towards the beginning. I'm going to run back up this way, and there's going to be... I think this is the only other time, apart from the very first one, I think this might be the only other time that there's a rot that runs around like this. So you'll have to look around. He's going to be in the flowers. You'll see him kind of just running around. He is there. You'll see him quickly running around. So pulse next to him, and then you can collect him. I think he's the only other one that's kind of running around like that. And then you're going to get the flower hat as well. And that's where we are. So just two more rots, uh, a hat and a shrine. So we'll get the hat now, the shrine and the hat are here. So I'm just doing this, this is actually part of the shrine. But uh, there, if we'll just drop that down for now. Uh, what I'm supposed to do, I completely forgot how to use this mechanism. I'm running towards it. You're supposed to use the rot first to get the middle cog out, like so. And then you shoot the crystal. And I'm thinking, why in the hell? And what am I doing here? What am I doing wrong? It's such a simple little puzzle as well. Oh, of course it happens when I'm recording. So bring the rot out. So bring the the, uh, the middle cog out. Then shoot the mechanism. Wow, that was hard work, wasn't it? And then once we're up here, we're going to take the uh, the lift up. So shoot the crystal. flower and then straight away turn and aim for this flower the time will slow down so don't worry and then open up this chest and this is going to be hat number six so that's all of the hats found in this area again there's other stuff here you can see there's a chest there which will just have crystals in or something like that and the pot there of course will have the crystals in So slide down, and then we're going to use the uh, the tier to open this area up. So shoot the tier down like I did before. And then we're just going to push through. And almost run out of uh, time, but only just make it. Span a little too early there. Only just. There we go. So that's flower shrine number three. just two more rots to go now and they are right at the very start so we need to make our way all the way back down the mountain now you could just fast travel at this point if you are here uh, if you've already done this area just fast travel down to the bottom again but I'm gonna go down the slide for the people who haven't done it before so there are other um, patches like here you can see there's another uh, vegetable patch there's one of those things that you can shoot in the tree. Uh, so if you do the vegetable patch, you'll get some of the experience. And then there's the crystals and things like that. Uh, I need to call this up. The lift should already be here for you if you, this is the first time you're coming through. But this game is surprisingly difficult to get through and not accidentally pick all of the collectibles up as you go. <laughs> surprisingly. So there's a statue there. There'll be some of the purple fruits above you. I've already got those because those don't matter. And then we'll be making our way down. So go to the three flowers. 
Don't know why that one didn't hit. Didn't hit it, obviously. Didn't count, should I say. And then down here. And then if you turn around, um, there's some more crystals and things in a, a chest over there. And then we'll slide down all the way back to the beginning. So you will recognize it. We're back at the water. So on the right hand side is where we initially started. The fast travel points there ahead of us. But there's two more rot to get. This first one here you couldn't get because obviously you needed the bow for this. So you use the bow and uh, he will pop out there. This next one we could have got earlier on. But I'll get them both together here at this point. So that's where we are on the island. So the final one is lots of swimming involved here. We could have got this one earlier. Uh, I'm going to kind of just sign off here at this point because this is a long old swim. Kina does not like to swim quickly and there's no speed up button. Uh, the good thing is that water is not involved in the game. You, you literally swim at this pace and that's all you can do. You can't dive which is great. It means there's nothing underwater. Uh, so you can see, kind of make out where we're heading here. Just head across here. Uh, there's going to be, I think it's under a rock or a log, this one. And then that's going to be the final rot for this area. So that's this one done. So, uh, right, I might as well get out of here. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.